All right, seven o'clock. So we will begin the borough workshop regular meeting for June 14, 2023, uh, with our call to order. President Ferguson. Here. Vice President Gerard. Here. Councilmember Fagan. Here. Councilmember Kratzer. Here. Councilmember Stevens. Here. Mayor Gerard. Here. Borough Manager Snyder. Here. Borough Solicitor Harper. Here. All right, we'll next do our Pledge of Allegiance. Flag day. It is it flag, flag day. day. Yeah. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Stevens, you can do our invitation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of this day and your creation and for your many blessings on us and on our community. We are thankful for this opportunity to serve our community and ask that you would give us wisdom as we work on its behalf. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. All right, we'll begin with item one, approval of the meeting agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the meeting agenda for June 14, 2023 workshop and regular meeting? I'll second. I got a motion from Councilwoman Cresser, a second from Councilman Gerard. Any questions, changes, or amendments? I'd like to ask that we add a um, report on the PSAB conference. That would be under reports or standing committees? Wherever you'd like to put it. Uh, let's put it under reports and correspondence. We'll do that first. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, I will also say under reports and standing committees in there, just cross out the action committee report. Thank you. Anything else? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. All right, item two, approval of the meeting minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes for the May 3rd, 2023 workshop and the May 17th regular meetings? So moved. Second. I got a motion from Councilman Stevens, a second from Councilwoman Presser. Any questions, changes, or amendments to those? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. Motion passes. Item three, public input. Um, we don't have anyone uh, with us today. Is there anyone online that might want that has put submitted any questions or anything? Okay. We'll go on to item four, the announcements. Next for our council meeting is July 19th, workshop <coughs> regular meeting at 7 p.m. here in council chambers. Barack is scheduled to meet Wednesday, June 26th at 8 a.m. here in council chambers. The borough office will be closed Tuesday, July 4th in observance of the 4th of July holiday. The next planning commission meeting is scheduled for July 10th at 7 p.m. in council chambers. Zoning hearing board meeting for 103 North Main Street is scheduled for August 10th at 7 p.m. in council chambers. And Hatfield Borough 125th anniversary celebration is this Saturday, June 17th, 12 to 4 at Centennial Park. Please come out and enjoy the fun. All right, any questions? If not, we'll go on to item five, public hearing for ordinance number 551, the regulating of the use of consumer and display fireworks. And I will turn this over to Madam Solicitor. Thank you. Um, we have a public hearing tonight on ordinance number 551 which regulates the use of consumer fireworks and display fireworks within the borough. To be clear, it basically prohibits a, a homeowner from having fireworks anywhere in their backyard or something like that. We already prohibited in our public parks unless it's approved in advance by the borough manager in writing. Um, and uh, the thought was the law has changed in Pennsylvania to make what are called consumer fireworks more available, but they are projectiles and can cause damage, fire, uh, personal injuries, that kind of a thing. And uh, state law allows places 
where it's impossible to get 150 feet from a person, a car, or an occupied structure, or even further, 300 feet to um, ban them all together. So that's what this ordinance does. Um, I want to mark as exhibits B1, which is proof that we published this in uh, the reporter newspaper. And um, as B2, an actual copy of Ordinance 551. Now, Burr Council has reviewed this several times. I will point out that um, I fit it in Chapter 11, I think. I went back and made some small little tweaks here and there. Maybe it's not in Chapter 11. It's in Chapter 10. To make sure that when we codify the ordinances, it drops right into the book in an appropriate place. So um, that's in there. Other than that, I mean, you've seen it before, and I don't think you have any questions. We, the committee worked very hard on this, and then we basically brought it in line with um, state law. Basically, it. Yeah. So, okay. Now we're going to ask the public if there's any questions. There's no one here in the public. Uh, so um, that's it, unless for council has questions that we want to have as part of the hearing. Yeah. Looks like nobody does. Okay, we'll close the hearing and it is on for action later this evening. Yep. All right. Thank you, Madam Solicitor. Um, so we'll go on to item six, our reports from our standing committees and the mayor. So budget labor finance uh, committee report. Uh, we did meet today. Uh, we did uh, start reviewing a, a um, roadmap for our budget. Um, so we can start planning out, you know, uh, five to 10 years or so in the future. Um, so I thought that was very productive. Um, the only other thing that really came out from that was our investments. As you know, we invested in some T-bills to, to kind of balance out the potential losses or the potential impact of the market. And so far, we're kind of balanced out. We're about even. So um, other than that, I don't think there was anything significant really to mention. Oh, the employee. Oh, yeah, sorry. And uh, we are making changes to the employee handbook. Um, is that on for an action item tonight as well, too? Okay. July. In July, yeah. sorry. Yeah. That's right. I'm sorry. Sorry. Katie just um, sent it to me to look at. Yep. I've seen it before, but she sent me the latest version. Of right. <laughs> right. The biggest change is that had to do with FMLA. So basically everything kind of falls under FMLA now. So um, which is pretty standard for what most companies and businesses are doing. So any questions? All right, if not, we'll go on to planning, building, and zoning reports. The committee has not met recently, so I have nothing new to report. Okay. Any questions for Larry? If not, we'll go on to public safety. The committee has not um, met recently, so there's nothing new to report at this time. The traffic study was printed in the last informer. Mm -hmm. So that's the, last, the latest news that we have. Right okay. Okay. Any questions? How about public works, property, and equipment? Well, I did have some news uh, to share from the property works, um, oh, sorry, public works, property, and equipment committee. Uh, we had spoken at our last meeting about contributing to a salt shed roof that's actually technically in Hatfield Township, but that we share. Uh, both the facilities and the salt supply with. Um, so we had talked about they're getting a new roof, and I believe some, I don't know if there's anything else that they're doing, but uh, their uh, number for the total project was almost $50,000. Um, they're asking Hatfield Borough to contribute $5,000 uh, in order to get these uh, sumer needed. I mean, it's a pretty old facility, so um, they're doing the work, and we do, like I said, share it. Uh, shared a lot of our salt there with them. So uh, the committee thought it would be appropriate to send those funds to the township in the amount of $5,000. Uh, I was told there is room in the 2023 budget for that line item. Uh, so as a committee, we did you know, advise that we would uh, cover at least $5,000 well, $5, contribution to the township for their salt shed. Um, 
don't know if anybody has any questions about any of that. Or what, comments? When are they uh, supposed to make the? When's the construction going to begin? Is this year? It's already started. Oh, it's already started. Okay. Yeah. I, I got fuel today over there, and they had sections of it torn off, and they're already starting on it. Okay. So it might be a good idea for our council to vote on that to approve that. Okay. But, um, yeah, I don't know if that's is that, that just like a resolution. I mean, it's already we already have it, the money budgeted, so it's nothing additional okay. that's coming well, out of the budget. It's extra. It's not budgeted. No. For this, or is it budgeted? There's money in the budget. There's money in the budget. There's there's in the budget. Yeah. I think there was about thirteen thousand dollars in the budget that would be applicable. And like I said, it's only five thousand. So. Okay, fine. Right. Yeah. If you come out of this line, yes, line item budget, and there's thirteen thousand dollars across all three accounts. Um, or all three like uh, line items that we have, you know, general electric sewer, and there's 13 miscellaneous. So um, we would have enough to cover. Okay, you got it in the budget. It's all right. I thought it was extra. Ah, no, okay. no, that'll be this year's for this year's budget. Okay. Um, and we did also have a discussion. I said we also have any questions. Go ahead. Uh, we did have some uh, residential interest in the dog park idea. Uh, which we discussed as a committee, and um, you know, while we understand people might be interested in taking their dogs to a park, um, we did not think it would be advisable to look into that any further. So at this time, we're not um, recommending moving forward with the dog park. And we didn't have to answer any questions that they might have about that. But if not, I think that was it. I see you guys have anything to add. Pretty much sums it up. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll go on to the utilities committee report. Okay. We have um, uh, we have the a, the electric service was discussed for supplying the Hatfield Police Department, and that as of right now is still on hold. That is uh, pending further review due to the legalities of. Uh, the possibility of us having problems with PPNL if we decide to do that. So for now, it is still being investigated, but no decision has been made. Uh, the behind the meter generator, um, shortly we will be starting our peak shaving, and that is aimed towards lowering some of our costs for electrical transmission and distribution. Uh, we now have a, a startup procedure and policy in place in the event of a uh, borough-wide uh, power outage based on um, situations that may occur in the future. Uh, one thing we need to emphasize is this is not going to be something that is going to happen instantaneously. It depends on the situation based on the procedures that have been put in place. So people cannot expect that within 10 or 15 minutes after power goes out that we will be firing up the generator. It depends on a number of different factors before that will happen. Uh, the telemetry update, there have been a number of shutoffs um, that have occurred and there'll be more current coming up this coming week. Uh, as of right now, the total delinquency rate is a little over $29,000 of which 13,000 of that is for six different properties which are being addressed and have already had some liens filed against them. And there have also been three of the properties that have been shut off. And uh, that's all we have. That's all I have for the utilities committee report. I did have a question. Um, yes. Regarding the procedures for operating the generator during a power outage, is that, um, is that like public? Or have, like, did you share that with anybody? Or can you share that with people as far as? Yeah, what basically. This is related to the entire borough. The entire borough goes out. Right, it's an emergency, not an emergency, but right. like a situation. Okay, if, uh, if it's one circuit in the borough, that's on, you know, that right. will not be occurring. But if the entire borough goes out after a specified amount of time, it's uh, going to be, it's been determined that there will be procedures in place to start it up at that point. Um, that is in conjunction with the transmission of the power coming in from PPNL. Um, it, it's expensive to start up the, the generator. Mm -hmm. So we want to have policies and procedures in place so we can 
eliminate or not eliminate, but at least keep the cost down of having to do that. So it's it's basically playing by ear, depending upon what we're being told by P and L, PP and L, in relation to how long the power outage is going to be, and we have to do it in conjunction with them to prevent uh, problems with the transmission lines. Okay. So uh, is it their procedures or are we making procedures as far as just the policy of like- It's our policy it will be our within the borough, but we did it in conjunction with information we got from pp &L. Okay, so my only recommendation is if they're not in place already, just make them public, like put them on the web somewhere so yes. people know what they are. So there's not a bunch of questions about, well, well you know, why was it handled this way? And, and people might have comments on the procedures though. Yeah, and, and if I can to build on to that, you know, one of the things uh, for the public to know, one of the things that Public Works does, and Steve can add on this if you'd like, but there's a there's steps they go through to see, determine where it is, determine uh, is there any risk to the public before they would turn it on. So there's a process that takes a couple of hours of them inspecting the lines and going through their process before we would ever turn anything on. So that's that's part of the reason why there's a delay and when we would ever use it. And then also we determined that really it's more going to be in a catastrophic situation like Irene or one of those situations where everything's out and it's going to be out for a period of time. So, but again, you know, Steve, if you want to comment on, you can, but that's kind of, I wanted to let the public know that that was part of the guidelines and setting that up. So, you know, because again, we don't want them to be out there and be unsafe. We don't want the public to be unsafe. So we want to make sure that the, the, that those are, that that evaluation has happened for everyone's public safety before we would ever turn anything on. So yeah, that, that's pretty much. Never know how close you guys are. So that's pretty much about it. I mean, we have to do our due diligence to make sure that there is no down wires or any faults or anything within our town limits, and that the outage is in fact a loss of power from PPNL. So those things do take time. And you can't put a specific time frame on those things because lots of things take account there as far as weather, um, daytime, nighttime, you know. So it's just a, it's a timing thing. That's all I have from utilities. Any other questions? If not, how about Herock? Um, this this month we are honoring the Hatfield Fire Company and the Hatfield Police Department as our businesses of the month. Although they're not really businesses, they are uh, civic organizations to help us out. Uh, the 125th celebration of the founding of the borough is set for this coming Saturday, the 17th, starting noontime and running to four o'clock. We hope to see a lot of people out there, a lot of activities activities for the families and the uh, children. And uh, we had our Memorial Day parade, which uh, a lot of the members participated in. And uh, we'd like to, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Lindsay Hellman for all her work in conjunction with Steve and the Public Works Department for putting together the upcoming 125th celebration. So we're looking forward to that this coming Saturday. And, I think the weather's going to cooperate. <laughs> so that's all from the uh, Herock Committee. Yeah. Any questions? All right. If not, Madam Mayor. I just have two things here. At the uh, park cleanup, I was uh, approached by one of our residents who um, asked about the possibility of erecting a chimney swift tower. On borough property. Now, I'm sorry, a, a, a what? Chimney Swift Tower. Okay. okay chimney Swift, it's a bird. Okay. And uh, basically, the way these birds roost, instead of regular birds roost this way, they roost this way. So their uh, natural habitat is in a chimney. And because um, most people have grates on their chimney, they're running out of places to roost. So this gentleman thought that the borough property right behind the borough hall would be an ideal place to uh, erect that. So um, I'm thinking this probably is in the same category as the dog park and should go to uh, public works and property, that committee, and they can look into that. Um, if you wanna learn more about this, 
you can go on YouTube and they have several videos what goes into erecting a tower. And also it will show how the chimney swifts return to their tower. It's actually quite interesting. So is this something we want to do? I don't know. Is this something that should be presented to the uh, public works and property or maybe into strategic planning? I don't know. Is this, it really well, is. Certainly consider it. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any strong opinions on this no. matter? As Not a, at this point. Okay. <laughs> never met a chimney swift. No, I'm uh, <laughs> looking up now. They're, they're sizable. Yeah. Yeah. And, you think and, of a chimney. And, and, and we actually went to uh, Fort Washington State Park and we saw the chimney swift tower they have there. And it's really not complicated or it would be easy to build. But again, will that attract a lot of birds? What are the birds going to do? Or is it going to be a nuisance? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider. But um, I told this gentleman that I would bring it to borough council, see what everybody thought. Yeah, I think public works committee can consider it and come back with a recommendation. I, uh, I have photographs from uh, Fort Washington of the structure that they have down there. And uh, just to give you an idea of what it would look like. Was was there, busy? Was, was there a lot of activity in there? No. Not at the time we were no. there. No. It was, uh, we were there, what, in the morning? Yeah, it was in the morning. Yeah, okay. I think they come. They come at night, at, okay, night. at twilight. Look at look at the YouTube and see Chimney oh, well. Swift's returning to the town. It's okay. really cool. I think okay. it's, that's my opinion. Okay, and the same gentleman offered to give a presentation to uh, the borough, kids, adults, whatever. Um, he has a special presentation on moths. Now, I thought it would be very interesting, but since it's about moths, he has the ability, puts up a screen, shines a light, and it attracts moths. So this would be something that would have to be done at night. Um, I thought it could be part of our movie night. And um, it's, the gentleman is not available this year or on August 24th at the movie night, but perhaps next year. And um, it was brought out that perhaps we could do a themed movie night. So you'd have a moth presentation and the movie A Bug's Life. You know, just something to, Keep it together so it would be something for the kids to really get into and would, you know they could watch the movie so that's just a um that's just a thought so i don't know if it will discuss it for next year because i don't think it it's going to be feasible for this year but he seemed very willing to give presentations and i'm sure he has quite a few of them so you know we could have a theme movie night Okay, and I think that's it. That's all I have. Yeah. I think it's definitely something to present to Lindsay and see if, you know, always looking for creative ideas like that. So, yeah, I think Steve, Lindsay, and I had a brief conversation about it and a looks like kind of thing tying it together. And um, I think I have a folder for strategic planning for this year. So, it's something that I put in the folder of just, hey, let's talk about it and see where we want to move for the future with it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any other questions? All right, uh, we'll go to item seven, reports and correspondence. <clears throat> so we'll start off with the PSAB conference. Councilman Thank Stevens. You. As you know, uh, Jamie and I attended the, the Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs annual conference from June 4th to the 7th, where we had the opportunity to attend many interesting and informative sessions and to network with other borough leaders from across the, straight, the state. I placed at uh, your seats for your information, a list of the resolutions that uh, were adopted at the conference. And of particular interest to our borough, I believe, are resolution number six, which uh, seeks legislation that would allow local police to use stop, uh, speed timing equipment, such as radar or LIDAR, and resolution number 15, which urges the legislature to formally require PennDOT to maintain uh, stormwater systems in their roads regardless of whether they are in a township or a borough. So our uh, 
lobbyists will be uh, working on the, the borough's behalf uh, to that, that end and has been for some time on some of those resolutions, but but we keep on trying, plugging away at it, so. Um, and to give reference to that, that would have, if that had been in place, we wouldn't have had to work with Representative Maligari and, and yeah. Senator Collette to get the million dollars in funding to pay for the road work, pay for the sewer work, that, or excuse me, the, the stormwater work that was part of their road work, which they didn't cover. Right. So that would change it in the future, wouldn't have right. to, okay. And uh, Hatfield Borough was honored with a, a surprise awards for uh, third place for both the, our website and newsletter. So, ah, nice. Ta -da. all right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I called Lindsay and thanked her personally. <laughs> so, um, as Larry said, we had no idea we were getting them. I kept asking Lindsay because I would have loved for her to accept them on behalf of the borough. She does an awesome job on both the website and the newsletter. We were out there and we looked at the program and saw Hatfield Borough. So it was a great surprise, but I think it's awesome to have the yeah. borough to be recognized. Now the question is, where are you going to hang those? Uh, I told Lindsay she could put them in her office in the window. <laughs> <laughs> Steve can work with her on that. <laughs> well, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Any questions for Councilman Stevens? Okay. All right. We'll go on to the monthly investment report. Monthly investor report was in your packets along with um, the cash report. Just highlighting, uh, we look good uh, in uh, 2023 this far with uh, making some money in our investment. I will add that uh, Budget Finance and Labor talked tonight about a report for investments that can show uh, where we were at uh, at our six month, our 12 month, our 24 month for the 750 from the electric fund for investments and the 250 from the sewer managed. Um, Diane and I worked on a report and ran that by a bunch of finance and labor tonight. They like the report, so that will continue to be in your packets next month. It will basically show what we purchased the investment, like the T notes at, and where we are uh, market value wise, like year to date. So hopefully, it'll give a good indication, you know, whether we're positive or, you know, negative. But as we all know, they'll mature to par at $250,000 for each. Any questions? All right, how about our monthly EIT and LST update? Year to date for EIT, we are at $245,946, uh, which is an increase of $20,798 from uh, 2022. And when we're moving on to LST, we're at $31,391, which is an increase of $8,977 from 2022. So both of these accounts are looking extremely well. I do have Diane double checking since it was brought up a couple of meetings ago. Hey, let's make sure Hatfield Borough is getting Hatfield Borough and not Hatborough Borough. And so she's been checking and there hasn't been any discrepancies to year to date. All right. Any questions? All right, monthly year to date. Monthly year to date was in your packets. Um, Want to highlight some revenues. It seems like they're up a little bit. We had um, taxes that come in in end of April, but a lot of times that we don't get the check till the beginning of May for real estate. So that helps us in revenue. Um, uh, for expenses, we had some debt payments that we have in uh, May that come out. So that's referenced there for the, our long-term debt for um, the 2020 series note. We, it's uh, roughly $125,000. So that's why the expenses are up a little bit in May as well. All right, any questions? All right, how about zoning hearing board application? The only zoning hearing board application we have uh, right now is for 103 North Main Street. And that uh, zoning hearing board will take place on August 10th at seven o'clock PM. That was a continuation from a previous meeting uh, that they had where uh, they decided to continue the meeting, a decision was not made, and they're gonna open the hearing back again on August 10th at seven o'clock p.m. Okay, so they actually talked about? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, okay. They talked about it. Uh, they went back into executive session for a little bit and came back and said that they would like to continue the hearing and that a date will be determined. And we had got notification yesterday that the date was August 10th. 
So they're going to open up the hearing again for more public comment on August 10th. Any questions? All right, how about our police department report? Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi. So there's nothing more to add uh, call wise to the police report, but we do have our cadet, uh, Riley Hefner, is graduating from police academy tonight. So she'll be starting with her FTO um, a week from Monday uh, once she gets some in house training that is required before she goes out on the street. And then we're also going to be participating this fall in the next consortium exam um, to fill at least one more spot that we will have open. Lieutenant Jane, how's morale? Doing okay. <laughs> We're doing it. It's yeah. Well, it's it's nice. We have uh, a, a bunch of new faces, so we're getting back up to where we should be manpower wise, um, because that can always be a little bit of a, a frustrating thing to have squads that are running a little bit short, um, and then you start getting injuries on top of that, and it can be for a, a a while. It could be a little frustrating for the officers. So, but we're getting back up to our full complement which is, is good. So, so far, so good. Any questions for Lieutenant? All right. Thank you. How about the fire department report? There was no fire department uh, report in your packets this evening. Um, EMS? There was no official EMS report in the packets, but um, I know they've been really busy. I'm still trying to coordinate with Laura a time where we can do a tour of the VMSC. Um, I did speak to Chief this afternoon, and they are looking to come make a presentation of the future of the VMSC and some other items, um, maybe the end of the summer, early fall. And uh, also available with that presentation, they're going to be talking about um, the ability to do some ride-alongs if uh, people are interested, mm -hmm. like uh, elected officials are interested. So I thought that was a really nice community idea. So um, we'll just see when we can schedule that visit to tour the VMSC, and then I look forward to them attending one of our meetings in the near future. Okay. Yeah, if we can probably schedule some, if we can plan for maybe the fall, probably better when we have more meetings and more. Yeah, I was looking around August 30th, which is really the September workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? If not, uh, public works. Uh, there's nothing really exceptional to add to what's already here. Um, it's been spending a lot of time cleaning up the parade route for the Memorial Day parade, and then uh, just recently cleaning up Centennial Park to make sure that's nice and shiny for the 125. Uh, I will note that the ADA contractor has completed all the ramps for this year and all of the uh, select sidewalk pads as well. So they're, they haven't submitted anything for payment or anything like that. We're still a little ways away from that, but their work has been completed. And I thought the, the public works, the work that you guys did out at uh, Heritage Park looked really, really nice, that cleanup work. So for the brush along oh, the yeah, pond. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter walked over and she took pictures like, wow, it's so clear. I can see all the way over the pond. <laughs> so. we, we need to try to keep that area clear because of that retaining wall there. If, uh, if those trees start, the roots start digging into that retaining wall, it's going to make the whole thing crumble and fall. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Any questions for Steve? If not, we'll go on to engineering reports. The engineering report was in your packets. Uh, we will talk about the 2023 roadway resurfacing project tonight. Um, only a couple things to highlight. Uh, on June 1st, uh, they received some as built plans um, and a request for final escrow for Edinburgh Square that's currently under review. Uh, 23 North Main Street we received sketch plans for some townhouse units um, that's currently under review and those um, comments were also sent to the developer. I haven't heard anything back. And um, yeah, so I guess that's really it for Chad's report. There's no new changes in any other developments. Any questions? All right, how about zoning officer building code and property maintenance reports? 
uh, a few items from this report to highlight um, just the commercial tenant uh, fit out a Cherry Street. That's like a food truck catering business that they're do, doing some storage there uh, for that. Some violations that were issued. Uh, we're well aware of 302 West Broad Street and it was deemed uninhabitable. That's why it was posted. And just at 304 Union Street, the collection bins have been removed. Any questions? How about fire marshal safety? There's no specific report in your packets, but um, I do know they continue fire safety inspections and there will be um, a new gentleman performing them in the next upcoming weeks. If there are no questions, uh, how about pool advisory? Uh, two pool advisory uh, reports were in your packets, uh, March and April, and just highlighting uh, as of April 11th, they had 400 families sign up for the aquatic center and they have roughly 150 employees, which was up from last season where they had 122. Is the 400, the uh, is that up or down or, or constant from year over year? Well, I'm not sure, but I can, I can ask. Okay. Or I can go back and see what they reported last year. I was year. just curious. I know they, I, I know they've, well, I, anyway. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> All right. Any questions? If not, we'll go on to item eight, manager's reports. My report was in your packets. Um, nothing really new to report uh, in land development or outstanding project updates. Um, just want to highlight that, um, as Rich said, that Steve and Lindsay have been working extremely hard uh, on the 125. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that this Saturday. Uh, the North Penn Water Authority reports, if you did not attend uh, the Water Authority Banquet, uh, these reports are available at the borough office. It's their annual drinking and their 2022 annual report. I think you might have had them at your places as well from the North Penn Water Authority representative, but there are copies for residents if they're interested. And then um, another highlight from um, the Montgomery County Boroughs Association. Uh, if you weren't familiar, there's a Boroughs Association in Montgomery County. We used to get together and have these great dinners and great meetings, and it's kind of fell to the wayside since COVID. Well, at PSAB, we had a meeting, and we're trying to basically revive that Montgomery County Boroughs Association. There's some members from Bernathan and Hatboro, Satterton, you know, myself, and a couple other municipalities that are going to step up and try to get this you know, organization up and running, holding quarterly dinner meetings and having guest speakers, which is just kind of informative. We're looking at holding um, one in September and one in December this year, so I'll keep you posted on that. And finally, just wanted to highlight, I know Larry expressed um, that we received newsletters and websites, but I have a really great picture of Larry up on the screen that he got 30 years of service for Hatfield Borough, and I think it's awesome, and congratulations to Larry. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it for my report, if you have any questions. That's a nice picture, Larry. Yeah, that's a great yeah. picture. <laughs> He's sticking his chest out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Got lucky. Uh, all right. If there are no questions um, for the manager, we'll go on to item nine new business and discussion items. Item A the 2023 roadway, roadway resurfacing project. On May 24th, six bids were received for the 2023 roadway resurfacing project. Um, the lowest bid roles responsible bidder was Blooming Grant Contractors Inc. in the amount of $84,920. Uh, it's on for consideration this evening as a recommendation to um, appoint them the contract. I just will note that we had budgeted this year uh, 109905 so this comes in well under budget. Um, and it's on for consideration as an action item, as I mentioned. Any money left for the salt shed. That's right. <laughs> I think we might need it other places. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, the engineers didn't have any issue with them. It's a good 
company. We haven't used them before, have we? Yeah, they've done. They did last year. They did last year, and they also did Talmadge Avenue when that got resurfaced. Oh, it's the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They've they've done excellent work for us in the past, and we've never had an issue with them on our end or on the engineering's end. We're getting okay. paid for. It, so. Okay. Good. Okay. If there are no questions, we'll go on to item B, Resolution 2023-10, Montgomery County Hazard Mitigation Plan. The 2022 Montgomery uh, Hazard Mitigation Plan has been approved uh, by FEMA. Uh, this just means that it's available for you know, municipal adoption, and if we have an adopted plan, the municipalities can become eligible for FEMA funding uh, to implement projects that are included and receive disaster mitigation funding should a disaster occur. We have gotten funding uh, in the past for hurricanes and those type of things back from any expenses that we had put out. So this is on for consideration as an action item this evening, this resolution that we adopt that, like I said, you can get funding from FEMA. If anyone's interested in the plan, it's in this binder here, it's 300 and some pages and it'll be available at the borough office. Or you can click the website that I, I believe was distributed. And correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you're going to set up an exam for all the council members to take yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's only true false because that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any questions? If not, we'll go on to old business. Uh, resolution 2023-09, accept the lease agreement. Okay. I, I can start then. You can yeah. jump in, right? Yeah, sure. We've been discussing this one for months. This is a... Our lease ran out. Remember, we had uh, Salters was in the station for a while, and SEPTA had another bidder on this um, that wanted to use it basically for storage of junk stuff. Um, since the boroughs always thought this sort of the gateway to the borough business district, and we might be able to get a user that would help revitalize the downtown, um, we wanted to renew the lease. It's a 10 year lease with two five year options. The Significant thing about it is that we get rent credits, but we're going to have to put some money out to fix the building. Okay. And I mean, I think that's basically it. Yep. Right on. So yep. it's pretty good. It's just, uh, actually, Jamie did most of the work, and this is the, the best deal we can get now, we think. Yeah, I agree. Yep. yep. No, I agree. We we had lots of conversations about it, went back and forth with them to get funding. And, you know, um, right. and to your point, Madam Solicitor, it's, it's the gateway to the borough, so we we don't want it as a railroad junkyard for <laughs> somebody. Right. So, um, and the other thing is, uh, we rent the parking lot from them. So. Yeah, it's parking, parking downtown. Parking, right, it's yeah. parking downtown. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of useful. So yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's all for action tonight, right? Yep. Yep. All right, item C. All right, any questions? All right, uh, Com Comcast Franchise Agreement. That's just one to study. Um, we had a pole attachment agreement with uh, Comcast because we own our poles. Mm -hmm. In many places, they cut a deal with AT&T or, or, or Pico or somebody who owns the poles, and, and then they get to put their equipment on the poles. But here in the borough, we own them. We, we get a little money from them. Not a lot. So much per pole comes out to a few thousand dollars, but we decided that we were going to try to make sure that gets renewed at the same time as it did last time. Last time we did this, I think they wrote us a check for 3500 something like that. And so I reached out to Brian Jeter, who is with Comcast to handle it last time, and he's looking into it for us, but we don't want to approve this yet, I don't think, until we get that one straight now. Okay. And is there any time sensitivity to getting this done or? Yeah, um, we had, remember as a part of the uh, consortium, we had hired a law firm to help negotiate this mm -hmm. and they did negotiate this and uh, they do periodically call Jamie and say, how can we have it approved again? But we didn't want to pay their rates to get the whole attachment agreement. So we're just trying to get the whole attachment thing done. Uh, and if I don't hear from Brian by the end of this week, I'll follow up. Okay. Okay. It's not a lot of money, but why leave it on the table if we can get it? Yeah. Right. Right. 
I will also add that um, I recently received correspondence from a resident um, who is not in favor of items 4.5 and 3.4 of this Comcast agreement. And that's just, it allows Comcast sole discretion in determining complaint resolution. And he believes that that my interpretation of his comment is that he believes that should be Hapto Borough's responsibility, and we should have a partnership with the resident instead of Comcast having a partnership with the resident. Um, I did reach out to Cohen uh, Law and ask if that was standard language in the agreement, and it seemed as if it was. And I remember um, I'm just waiting for them to look into it a little bit more if there's something outside of that. And I do remember the solicitor talking last meeting that it's great that we hold Comcast responsible and that we right. have 30, they have 30 days to fix the problem and then we can contact them afterwards. I remember you talking it about It is in, in the contract. There are certain standards for how they have to behave towards their own customers. And we have a right to look at that. And what their risk is that we won't renew their franchise because they will get cut out for our mouth. That cuts both ways because we have Comcast customers who want us to renew their franchise. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I think, remember we had to have a hearing to see if anybody had complaints? Right. At the time, nobody had complaints. Nobody showed up, nobody asked for anything, but you know, there's always the possibility that they'll treat a customer badly and that we'll be able to lean in on their, on the customer side. Yeah. There are things we can do that are different than resolving disputes. Yeah. So, and I, I think, think, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think that's probably the better approach versus us getting involved in every dispute that happens. So I don't think we want to be involved in billing disputes or any of that jazz because we don't do it. Right. You know? Right. Okay. Any questions? All right. If not, we will go on to our action item. First action item, motion to consider ordinance number 551, regulating the use of consumer and display fireworks. So moved. Yeah. I get a motion from Councilman Stevens, a second from Councilwoman Cresser. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? There are none. Motion passes. Yeah. All right, item B, motion to consider awarding the 2023 roadway resurfacing project to Blooming Glen Contractors, Inc. in the amount of $84,920. Second. I got a motion from Councilwoman Cresser, motion from Councilman Gerard. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. Item C, motion to consider resolution 2023-09, accept the lease agreement. So moved. Second. I get a motion from Councilman Stevens, a second from Councilman Fagan. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There are none, so motion passes. Item D, motion to consider resolution 2023-10, adopting the 2022 Montgomery County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Moved. Second. I get a motion from uh, Councilwoman Cresser, second from Councilman Gerard. Uh, I had a question. Is that the the 2022? Is that listed correctly? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know that uh, they had made a comment on the email that even though it's adopted in 2023, it was approved in 2022. It's now it was going through the process, so that's the plan. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. Motion passes. All right, item 12, motion to approve payment of the bills. So moved. Second. I got a motion from Councilman Gerard, a second from Councilman Stevens. Any questions on the bills? Anything we want to highlight? Right. They all occur, they're, no. they're pretty standard. Nothing, yeah. nothing, stand, yeah. nothing is significantly different than previous months. Right, right. Okay. Except a couple more charges for a lot of 125 items. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. If there are no questions, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. Motion passes. Um, I'm assuming that we're going to have an executive session to discuss real estate litigation and personal matters. Personnel matters? Yes, yes, we are. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Yep. Second. I got a motion from Councilwoman Cresser, a second from Councilman Gerard. All in favor? 
All right. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.